Good morning and Good welcome morning. to church. I'm Larissa. My name's Isaac. It's so great to be together again this morning. We hope you've been enjoying some of the nice sunny weather. We don't get that very often, so I hope you get um, you made the most of it. Yeah, yeah, I've had my Factor 50 on for sure. We're excited to have Ross our lead in worship this morning. Um, it's going to be great. And then we'll be over to Jacob, who's had a few weeks off, so I bet you're all missing him. And yeah, let's pray before we kick off with worship. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being able to meet together again online. We pray that you would teach us something new today. We pray that your spirit would be with us in our homes as we meet. Amen. Amen. Morning church, we're just gonna worship together now.
I wanna burn 
just thank you for this time of worship um, yeah we just pray that you'll meet us here today as um, Jacob speaks to us in a few moments um, and you'll be speaking to us throughout the week Amen Amen right now is when we have our notices come up along the screen um, so all the stuff we've got going on and if you want a um, complete breakdown of everything you can go to our website as well which has everything listed out as well um, this week we had our first life group. Uh, it was it was great. It was some real inspirational, practical examples of how we can be renewing the culture around us. So yeah, what's what's happening this week? So this week we have Andy Crouch speaking to us. Um, he'll be speaking to us on a world designed to flourish. So it's not one to miss out. Yeah, come along. Never too late to sign up. Right now, we're just going to hand over to Jacob, who's going to continue our series on DNA. And just before we do that, I'm going to read out the scripture, which is from Ephesians 4, verse 7 through to 16. It's quite a, it's quite a lot, so um, try to pay attention as best you can. Um, it says this, But grace was given to each one of us, according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, 
we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up, up in love. Yeah, good morning. Thank you, Isaac and uh, Larissa. Uh, it's great uh, to be back talking with you again this morning after uh, a few weeks off. And we're looking at this passage in Ephesians 4, 7 through to 16. And we're continuing to consider the DNA of church. What does it look like for you and I to live together as the church of God? I don't know about you, um, but I'm not overly brilliant at receiving uh, gifts. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe it's because I'm quite particular uh, about the things that I like. Uh, maybe it's because I've got a little bit of a, an expensive taste. I don't know, there might be a, an element of both of those things in there, but there's just this awkwardness of opening gifts in front of people, wondering whether or not the gift that they've given you uh, is going to be one that you like. And that awkward thing of, oh, do you, do you have the receipt for that gift? I'm, I'm going to take it back. But there's nothing better when someone who knows you, who thinks and puts thought into buying a gift for you, and they absolutely nail it. They get the right size, the right colour, the right fit, all of those things, whatever it might be. And they think of you and they consider you and they, they get you a great gift. That when you open it, you think, yes, this is just for me. I love this gift. This is great. I remember such a time in my life, and I still hold to this, that this is one of the best gifts I have ever received. Olivia once bought me a DeLonghi Dedica coffee machine. And this thing is wonderful. I love it so much. It's a piece of stainless steel beauty. And when you input the Italian roasted coffee, out comes this beautiful, lovely espresso, of which I have had far, far too many. But I love, I love that gift. I love that coffee machine. It's one of the best gifts I have ever had. But you see, this coffee machine, it's not really exclusive to me. And like most of the gifts that you and I have received, they're not exclusive to us. In fact, that coffee machine is one that I have uh, recommended to many people since. In fact, there might be some of you this morning uh, listening to this and I've recommended you that particular coffee machine. It's not exclusive to me. Coffee and coffee machines are not exclusive to me, as are the gifts that you have been given over the years. But God, he gets very specific with you and I when he gifts things to us. I want us to notice what it says in these passages and what um, Eric walked us through a little bit last week and four. What we see just preceding seven is it says there is one body, there is one spirit, there is one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and one Father. And it says, but to each one of us, but it says to each one of us, a special gift has been given. So not one gift. Not one gift, but many gifts to each one of us. The gifts of God, they're very specific. The gifts of God, they amount to the people on the earth. The gifts of God amount to the many people that are on the earth. God says to you this morning, there is only one of you. There is only one of you. And God says that I have given you gifts. I have given you gifts and talents. God says to you this morning that you are valuable and that you are precious to me. And I have placed in you these gifts and these talents that are specifically for you. Passions, desires that only you can fulfill. God says there is only one of you. And I want you to take these gifts and these talents and I want you to use them for my glory. That my kingdom may be made known and seen and felt in all of the spaces and places in which I have placed only you. But, it says, to each one a gift 
has been given. See, God has big plans for these gifts that he's placed within your life. There is only one of you. We spoke on on more general terms a number of weeks ago about how everything that God has given us is to be given away. The values, the, the assets of the kingdom of God received by us are not to be hoarded by us, not to be kept on a shelf, not to be placed as mementos in our houses and the homes of our hearts, but they're to be given away everything. Grace, love, forgiveness, peace, joy, hope should all be given, taken by us from God and freely given and released into the world in which we live. But what about these specific gifts? What about the gifts that God has deposited within each of us specifically? What are we to do with those? Are those to be hoarded? Are those to be kept to ourselves? Well, Paul, he, he, and sorry, in a later uh, passage in, in 1 Peter uh, 4, 10 through 11, we hear this uh, uh, value of the gifts, the specific gifts of God given to us, expounded a little bit further. 1 Peter 4, 10 through to 11 says this, As each has received a gift, there is only one of you. And God has deposited gifts within your life. Verse 10, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You see, there is no space or place that God doesn't want the gift that he's placed and deposited inside of you to flow out of you for the good of other people and for his glory. In other words, God is glorified when you use the gifts and talents that he has deposited within you for the benefit of other people, to serve them. So I want to say to us this morning, please don't use the gift. Please don't use the talent, the passions and the desires which you have in your life as you wonder what what, what they are. And for many of us, those will be very clear. And for some of us, they won't be so clear. But, but please don't limit the gift of God in your life to service your own life, to service your own career, your own aspirations, because that is not at all what those were attended for. Everything, everything, our lives should, 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 the gifts of God should be released into everything, every single space and place that we find ourselves, every environment, every situation, every circumstance. You see, everything, I said that a number of weeks ago, everything in my life, and I believe it to be true of everybody, is better when it's shared. Any, any, any good thing, the best things in my life are better when they are shared with other people. Shared or indeed given away. See Olivia she never really used to like uh, proper coffee. She would only ever drink the the instant stuff and I was really longing for her to enjoy the stainless steel DeLonghi Dedica and I long for her to just taste the coffee and to enjoy and to love it just as I do. And over a period of time she's begun to really love coffee. She's begun to use this coffee machine that we now share together and we have different style of coffee. Um, But Olivia, to the point where Olivia is in charge of the coffee order. And it's a great joy to me to share in that mutual love of coffee with her. And that's just a really mundane, silly example of a gift being shared and joy. But there are better examples. This week, when we were together in in life groups. And I just want to encourage you, life groups are one of the most fundamental, foremost things that you could prioritise in your life. And so as as your pastor, I want to implore you, I want to ask you, will you you commit 
to attending and coming along to Life Group, to receive, to hear the communion and fellowship with one another, to pray, to hear the word, and to be built up in unity as it's described in this passage in Ephesians. But we heard, and we heard as we're going through this series called Everything, which is around how, how the kingdom of God would be released in, in everything that we do. How God's, the fullness of God's plan uh, is that he will renew all things. And God wants to use us in this time to bring about change to the spaces and places that we find ourselves in. And he has specifically deposited gifts and talents within us to do so. And, and there was a couple of examples this week. One was of a, 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 a girl who was a, a, an artist and also an, an Arabic student. And she found herself over a period of time in a number of war, war-torn places. And she came across on a number of occasions women who had been mistreated. Uh, some of these were women who had been captured and had been recently freed from captivity of ISIS. And she used her gift of artistry to begin to start to paint portraits using this, these uh, ancient Arabic techniques. And these portraits of these women were beautiful, beautiful depictions showing these women the value and the preciousness of each and every one of them. This girl, she used her gift to um, put on workshops and to teach these women how to paint. And through that process, these women who had been captive by ISIS, who had been in severe poverty and so on, these women began to uh, start a healing process through this gift being released in them, being taught to them, healing and processing the pain of their experience. Another uh, example that we received of, a, of someone using the gift, their gifts in, in a workplace was of a, a young girl who had started as, as a junior uh, in one of the world's largest banks. And she wondered what she could do to bring and to release the kingdom of God into that space. She decided that she would start a generosity fund within uh, and with her peers. So although she was in a wonderfully privileged situation, although she'd gained a, a great job and she might have been at the bottom of the food chain within that bank, she, she was beginning to think, how might I establish something of the kingdom in this environment? And so she started this generosity fund. She realised that banks were about money and the people there were consumed by or could be consumed by money. And so she encouraged, by setting up this fund, people to give money away. And over the course of two years, with the support of senior people in the bank and the bank uh, matching contributions, she raised £450,000 from various different charities. See, these are wonderful examples of how God has placed people with gifts, placed people into spaces, and they haven't just used them to facilitate their own lives, but they've used them to help bring healing where there is broken. They've used them to help to, 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 to invite generosity. And I believe that each of us have got that responsibility. Each of us have the gift of God within us that we might use it for the expansion of his kingdom, to serve the good of other people, to create something and release something of his kingdom into this world. And I want to be clear when I talk about your gifts and your talents. As we consider this series on church DNA, I think sometimes we've made uh, mistakes in churches and, and I probably need to hold my hand up as well where what, what we've done is we've tried to build church ourselves. We've, we've tried to use the gifts and talents of people within our congregation to facilitate church. And what I've begun to understand is that that is not what God at all has designed us to do, desires us to do. You see, 99% if not more of our church they don't work in the church. They work outside of the church. Some of us, we spend our time, the majority of our time in government. Some of us spend the majority of our time in schools and universities. Some of us are on building sites and, and office blocks. Some of us are in hospitals. And I want to say to you this morning, there is only one of you. 
There is only one of you. And so as church, we need to begin to develop a better church DNA. We need to establish what the scriptures have designed for us to do. We need to equip people not to serve in church, but to serve as church. So I want to say to you, uh, what, I, what I want from, from each of you, what I want for us is that wherever we are, whatever our passions and our desires and our gifts are, that we don't see them just solely and merely for ourselves. We don't even see them merely just as service church, but we see them as opportunities to release the kingdom of God into this world. And I want to give us a warning. It's not a, an excuse to think that God has given us a talent that we can just go and use and do whatever we want and we don't have to operate and serve within the church. It's not an excuse to take your gifts related to your work or otherwise and use them devoid of any kingdom purpose. Though you may not be working, living, socialising entirely in the church, you're always doing them as the church. You see, there's a big difference in um, working in the church and working as the church. And I want to say this morning as lead, as pastor in this church, that I want us to be a people always working as the church. Not, not necessarily always working in the church, but always working, living, socialising as the the church and I believe that that's my job that's part of of my gift see Paul he he goes on to describe what's known as the word gifts he said God has deposited a gift to each of us and then he goes on to say part of these gifts are evangelists prophets apostles pastors and teachers These are those whose ministry is to share the word of God in many different spheres and in many, with many different expressions. And what does it say in this passage? It says, what, what's the purpose? What's the purpose of God giving apostles, evangelists, pastors and teachers and these ascension ministries for the church? The purpose is to equip the saints for ministry. So these word gifts, these word people are people who are uh, gifted by God to equip the saints for ministry. In other words, to equip you to live as the church wherever God would call you to be. And so perhaps this morning the cat is out the bag. That's, that's what God has gifted me with. God, you know, he, 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 he places on people the, these uh, ascension gifts. And I believe, it's probably worth saying this morning, I believe that we've made a mistake in church also when we allow and when we think that the pastor is the one who does everything. The pastor is the one who uh, has all the ideas, or has all the plans, creates all the structure, moves everything forward, does absolutely everything. We, 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 we have made a mistake when each of us are waiting for the pastor to do something, to be a jack of all trades, when what actually God has gifted them to do, what God has asked them to do, is to equip the saints for ministry. And I see it as my role, my primary role, to equip the saints for ministry, to inspire, to release, to disciple, to, to develop, to train, that you may flourish in the gift that God has deposited in your life. See, God has gifted me to help you to be the only one of you. And I'm only a small part of that process, but God has gifted me to help you to be the only one of you that there is. And you see, that's the wonderful thing about God's gift. About his gifts and the personal nature and the specifics of them. You know, you might think it's prideful of me to um, suggest that of myself. But I want to say to you this morning, there are many, many more pastors, far more qualified than me, to lead this church. There are a million and one better pastors, able to teach better, talk better, 
live better, far more, more, more further on in their journey, more theologically understood, and so on. There are far more. But you see, God, he hasn't asked those people. See, God, he hasn't gifted those people to pastor Life Church in Edinburgh in 2020 and beyond. God has gifted me to do that. And so my question for you this morning is what has God specifically gifted to you? What has God specifically gifted to you? And you might think about yourself, you might think, oh, I'm just one of many. And that's me, I'm one of many pastors. But God has gifted me, specifically, Life Church Edinburgh 2020 and beyond. And so what has God specifically gifted you with? There is only one of you. And God wants you to hear that this morning. And this is a collaborative process in the church, in the life of a church, church DNA. And so I want to hear from you. My email address is coming along the bottom now. And if, if something of your gifting has been provoked this morning and you want to talk with me, you want to have some time to just chat those things through, to start to maybe consider how you might use your gift, to start to maybe consider how you can develop the gift that God is, I want to I talk to you. I consider the most primary thing that God has asked me to do, to equip the saints for ministry. So we just come to a close now. I want to I wanna end with Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, the one whom great, from whom great gifts they flow. You see, Paul, he says this really strange uh, thing in, in verse 8. Uh, and you might, have, you might have noticed it. You might, like me, when I first kind of read it, I was thinking, what is this all about? He says, and therefore, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. I found this a really strange uh, sort of thing for Paul to throw in in the middle of this passage. But what Paul is quoting there is Psalm 68, 18, where the picture is depicted in that psalm of God triumphing over his enemies. And in ancient times, a, a conquering general would receive a triumphant procession when, they had, when he had uh, overcome his enemies when he'd won a war and a battle. And he'd received this triumphant procession in the city to where he belonged. And all of the bounty that he had won in the victory was on show in that procession. He received praise and adulation. And after that, after this big procession, what would happen is the gifts would be distributed into the city, into the people. The things that he had won in battle would be distributed to all those in attendance and all those around. And what Paul is saying in this passage is that the, that the, the fulfilment of this psalm is the victory of Jesus Christ over sin. But more than that, his, re his resurrection and his, an ascension where God has exalted him and placed him above all other things. God, Jesus, he, he descended, he came down into a battle to win the battle, to have the victory. And in ascending, he ascends not to leave us by ourselves, but to release gifts into us that we may live according to that great victory. And Jesus ascends and he's uh, uh, sat next to the Father, what he does is he asks the Father, he says, Lord, will you pour out your very Spirit, the one Spirit, to each? And this Spirit, it gives life and meaning and purpose to every single gift that God has placed within your armour. You see, the day of Pentecost was the triumphant procession of Jesus Christ when the gift of the Holy Spirit birthed the church. And I just want to pray to close that that very Holy Spirit would aliven the gifts, would bring fresh meaning to the gift that God has deposited to you and to you alone. 
So Father, I thank you for today. Lord, I praise you. I give you all the honour. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you descended to win a battle that we could never win. Lord, I thank you that you were a victor and that your resurrection and ascension is proof of that. But Father God, I thank you that you love us so that you did not leave us. But Lord, you ask, you call on the Father and say, Lord, will you pour out your spirit now? And that triumphant procession where your Holy Spirit was poured in and birthed the church, Father God, many gifts were established. But that one great gift, your Holy Spirit, I call upon now. Lord, I ask that you, in the spaces and places that we find ourselves in right now, Holy Spirit, will you come and birth life. Water the gift that you have given each of us. Father, I thank you that there is only one of us. There's only one of each of us. And so, Lord, will you help us to see our gift not only as things that facilitate our own life, our own career, our own aspirations, our own love, but, Father, I pray that you would help us to see our gifts as a call to release your kingdom everywhere. To serve other people and in doing so, Father, that your name would be made known and that your glory seen in every single space and place that a Christian person dwells. Father God, I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you all. I love you and I'm so looking forward to continuing to use the gift that God has placed in me to equip each of us for the work that God has called us. What a great privilege that is. Bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.